Hey Siri, what's the time? It's 8 11 p.m. Factory job. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have night shift. Okay, what is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Zinti Tkali and today I have for you guys another immigration video. This is going to be about how I paid my tuition fee as an international student here in Canada. And the question is, can you do the same? Anyways, um, without further ado guys, let's jump right into the video. So the question here is, can I pay my tuition fee as an international student in Canada? This is a yes or no question. I'm not going to lie. The answer is going to be yes and it's also going to be no. You see me? Me, I did it. I did it. I'm not going to lie. I did it. But can you do it? I don't know that's the question to ask yourself though I'm here to give you five factors to consider when making that decision the first one is the tuition so you need to make sure you understand your tuition fee so obviously you've gone through so many um, you've gone through so many lists of schools you've seen oh I want to reside here in Ontario I want to go with University of Manitoba or whatever university you see and then you go to their tuition fee fees to see oh can I actually afford this anyways there's the university and there's the college university is university and college is like polytechnic in Nigeria so you're pretty much doing two-year course or two-year program in a college and the university you're getting your four years degree and the, the other difference between university and college is that university tends to be more expensive so my university range from 20 30 40 thousand dollars per year for international students college would range between 12 13 or 14 fifteen thousand dollars per year i know um i think i had to pay within that range but also at some college that will ask you about twenty thousand dollars per year so that's the difference so let's say in ryerson you're paying um forty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars for a program in a more college you could be paying 10 12 13 14 15 thousand dollars for a program again this is per year and i'm not telling you the specific number i do not know how much they charge it's per the amount of courses you're taking for that semester so obviously every school has different tuition fees so you need to make the decision to know oh do i want to go to a university or a college Oh, do I want to go to this school or that school and then you can be able to make that call the second factor is that you have to be hard working are you a lazy person you cannot do it <laughs> not to not to discourage you but like you have to be hard working this is pretty much meaning that you want to go to school full-time and also work by the side by working by the side means you're working crazy hours to be able to pay for your expenses so your um your rent the tuition fee itself um other miscellaneous things that you need to have like phone bill clothes food all of those stuff you know so you need to be hard working this is not for a lazy person like you cannot be like oh i want to chew and like you know have a chew day there's no chew day there is no rest day you're coming back from work after working long hours to be able to care for yourself and pay your tuition fee and pay for all other expenses and you're coming back home to meet assignments because obviously you have to consider the coursework you're not going to school for fun and like canada education system is hard i'm not gonna lie it's very different from nigeria system so you need to make sure you're prepared for what you're trying to get yourself into um you have to make sure you do your essays your assignments all of those stuff and also work again in addition to that the third factor is that you need to consider the number of hours you're working per week this is very very important you don't want to play with immigration okay as an international student you are only entitled to 20 hours per week 
20 hours you don't want to work more than that i've heard horror stories about like you know um like an indian guy that came here thinking oh i'm gonna work more hours and immigration will not catch me they will catch you they will catch you and if they catch you finish they will bounce you back to your country so you need to be careful i think um i'm not sure i think he had to like battle it a little bit in court or maybe he was um taken back home but well, i don't know where that ended but you don't want to be in that position okay please manage your 20 hours per week try and get a high paying job which i know that it's gonna be hard as you know an, an, an entry level so um just try and make sure you work 20 hours per week don't pass that limit the only time you can pass that limit is after school so let's say your first semester is september to december during december time so after school that one that one week or two weeks you have you can work more hours then and you can also work during the holidays and get overtime pay um and then you're back in school january to about april and during that summer period so april may june july august and then beginning of school again september you can work crazy hours so that time you can work full-time hours and there's no limit then um just make sure while working and while in school those months of the semester work strictly 20 hours per week with regards to the holiday period Oh, um, over here in Canada, they pay you an hour and a half when you work during the holiday. So there are so many holiday. The, the one that we all know is, you know, Christmas, New Year, um, Boxing Day, all of those stuff. Um, so you can actually get paid time and a half. So let's say you're working a minimum wage of $14 per hour. Um, for that day, if you work like an 8 hour shift or a 12 hour shift, they're going to pay you times half of that money and also overtime if you have to stay for overtime i know that i used to make use of those then like i feel like there's never a christmas day or like a new year that i just get to like chill i'm always working always working overtime got to get my money in you know it's not easy um so yeah you can make use of those another thing to consider is try and go to the financial aid of your school so what i did was i went to the financial aid of my school and i pretty much begged them to like you know um help me um create a payment plan so they can help you to create the payment plan i know they'll require like a lump sum at first so let's say your school fees is about twenty thousand dollars per year they will ask you to pay like you know five thousand dollars just to you know start the courses and be able to pick your courses online and then the remaining fifteen thousand will be like you know you have a due date to pay it and make sure you meet that due date if you need an extension they can give you an extension i know i did that so i'm, I'm actually speaking from experience i'm gonna go way in once i'm talking about my actual story and how i did it last factor to consider when you know deciding if you can actually pay your tuition fee by yourself as an international student is that you need to make sure you cut on expenses so you need to make sure that all these clothes that you have sell them sell them on depop on poshmark on etsy like you need to make extra money you have to have you know your budget strict budget that you need to follow um so like i said the one i did was i ate noodles and like i ate like bread and tuna tuna mix like it was hard i'm not i'm not coming here to kind of like discourage you i'm just saying my story and i'm gonna go more in depth in the next part of this video um but yeah like like <laughs> things get hard but it's only you that is gonna be there um, and you're doing it for yourself it's an investment for yourself so when i moved in with a friend i didn't pay any rent at all i didn't pay any bills and that was so helpful because that chunk of money that could be going to rent was now going to um you know paying my tuition fee and making sure that i have enough money to survive um also what i did was even after working a full-time hours during the summer i um i also actually had like little bit of cash jobs so i remember working in like um downtown toronto um i had this like Igbo guy i don't even know where i met him but like the Igbo guy was working with like an insurance company 
and he was like the cleaning guy for them but he's our boss he's not doing the cleaning or like he's literally paying us all these students to help him like go clean the condos so let's say a condo had like a flood or a theft or whatever um obviously you pay your tenant insurance which by the way i pay right now so let's say someone comes to rob me off or whatever um the insurance will pay me back my laptop money or like my phone whatever the person stole the insurance will pay me back but for the cleaning job we're pretty much actually folding their clothes and like cleaning whatever mess was created it was it was not bad i'm not gonna lie compared to factory job factory job factory job oh my god oh my god hard labor I, mm -mm. hard labor factory job those jobs are like deadly you would literally like stand for 12 hours and i'm not kidding you you gotta get this money <laughs> i did that i worked at the garbage factory at the food factory you know all this mcdonald's burger all this egg that they put in their mcmuffin i work at, at an egg factory i worked so many places that i don't even know like i don't try yo i worked so many places and um you need all those small small petty cash and like cash job just to keep you going because again they all add up and they all help you to survive and you know do this thing you have to do which is pay your tuition um but it's all worth it at the end um now i'm gonna go in depth to how i paid my school fees and uh, my story about that all you wanna do is gas me how we end up in the backseat 